Okay, so creating your best body. So how can you create your best body? So good nutrition, we covered that already. Sleep eight to 10 hours a night. Moderate stress, meditation, yin yoga. Uh, weight training, walking, interval training. Interval training is basically doing these bursts of uh, high energy um, workouts. So for instance, if you're doing like the elliptical, you would go really, really fast for 30 to 60 seconds, and then you'd go really slow for 60 seconds. So the duration of interval training is not very long. It's only like a 20 minute workout, but it's a high intensity workout. And it's much more effective to lose body fat because it stimulates testosterone and growth hormones. So it's a shorter time to work out, and it's more efficient. It's more efficient. So interval training is, is really a, a good thing. Okay, healthy gut and liver, we're gonna go into a lot of detail on what this means in a little bit. Um, so all these three things, they affect hormone balance. Um, healthy gut means that you're gonna absorb more of your food, so you're gonna have a nutrient surplus, which creates hormone balance. And when you have hormone balance, and the hormones that I'm talking about is progesterone, DHEA, testosterone, growth hormones, um, aldosterone, cortisol, uh, it helps with enhanced work performance, sports, work, life. So when you have work, uh, hormone balance, you know, the title of this is, it's a pretty aesthetic title that I have for this lecture, but you know, body sculpting, great glutes, the minimum, minimus, medius, and maximus. So creating the perfect butt for women, that was part of the title. Uh, good abs for guys, um, ideal ratios. So let me take a step back. So if, by having hormone balance, you set the platform for achieving your best body. And you know, when someone, let's say a man or a woman has really low testosterone and low growth hormones because all these things they're not doing right, for them to achieve their best body is really difficult. So the ideal ratios, 0.7 ratio for a woman, waist to hip, 0.8 of waist to hip, and 0.8 waist to chest for men, that just discusses how there's been a lot of research done on, on, this is more of a vanity spiel that I'm about to go into. Um, there was a lot of research done on physical attractiveness, and these are the ratios that came up over and over again. Probably there's something to do on a subconscious level that those ratios represent fertility. And I think that's the reason why these ratios really work. Um, but anyway, those ratios also relate to higher libido, uh, greater sexual function, and maximum fertility for men and women. Right now we're having an epidemic where a lot of women can't get pregnant anymore. And a lot of them has to do with hormonal balance. They don't have hormonal balance. They have low progesterones. They could be overweight. They could be toxic. And they'll spend ten to $30,000 on in vitro. When, if you really want to get to the root cause of the problem, you need to address these issues and these healthy gut and liver. Some people get really toxic and they can't have babies um, and they don't have hormone balance. So, okay, quick summary. Symptoms are common but not normal. Eat only local organic and grass-fed meats. Keep a food journal. Be accountable. Track your progress with measurements. Eat protein with every meal. This is a common thing that, I have this more with women. There's some kind of weird cultural thing where women eat a lot less protein and more carbs and, and men eat more protein. You really need protein with every meal. And we went through the whole protein list. Um, only pick foods at the grocery that are not in the aisles, but are located on the outside of the aisles, such as produce, meats, eggs, fish, yams, etc., vegetables. Um, avoid anything in a package, and avoid things that you cannot pronounce. What about nuts? That's a good question. Um, so nuts have phytates in it. That's why a lot of people will sprout their nuts. They'll soak them to get rid of the phytates, and phytates are a protein that actually can damage the lining of the gut. Um, the other issue with nuts is they're loaded with omega-6s. So we talked a little bit about the omega-3, omega-6 ratio. So they have a lot less omega-3s and much more omega-6s. Um, granted, saying that, I would say you can have some nuts in your diet, maybe over your salads, but I wouldn't make it the base of uh, your meals. I would have maybe a sprinkle like six or seven almonds over a salad or something just for taste. Um, because walnuts have omega-3. They do, but if you look at the actual ratio, you could look it up online. The breakdowns of, of let's say, cashews or walnuts or uh, pecans, their omega-6 to omega ratio is the omega-3s are here and the omega-6s are here. I was actually looking at a, a 
an article and they were breaking down the omega-3 to omega-6 ratio on nuts and they're really loaded with omega-6s. The problem is we have so much omega-6s already in our diet, we don't really want to add more. So what I would recommend, you know, and then a lot of people will think, well, nuts is a source of protein. It's not. Predominantly, it's fat. And what I would recommend is just actually having it as more like a, a, a condiment where you're just sprinkling on certain foods, but it's not the base of your food. So let's say you had a chicken salad, so the chicken is your protein and the salad is your vegetable and it was a snack. I would just add some almonds or some Brazilian nuts or something like that on top. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Actually, go ahead and stand up for a second because the, the energy in the room is starting to die. <laughs> Just stand up. And you guys can ask questions while you're standing. If you want, you can do a little stretches, you know, you know, kind of move your body around. So you're not advocating uh, quinoa? Well, there's a particular, yeah, so the, primarily it's the, the anti-nutrient in it. I believe it's pronounced sopines. Um, Rob Wolf, he wrote, he's a doctor, he wrote the Paleo Solutions, and he goes into a lot of detail on anti-nutrients and how quinoa actually, it's probably not as damaging as gluten, but when most people have some kind of gut dysbiosis, um, what I try to do if my client really likes that specific grain to lower, to limit it as much as possible and then swap that out with maybe like yams or sweet potatoes that don't have those specific anti-nutrients. So, I know most people, there's a lot of marketing push for specific products, like the new thing, like one of the new things is agave, right? Yeah, so there's a huge push for agave, so now there's agave everywhere. The problem, yeah, it's because people, you know, they crave sugar, so they want agave with everything. <laughs> You know, you're, you're spiking your blood sugar, you're spiking your insulin, it's not that great for your health. Um, I'm, not, I'm not a huge fan of any type of sugar product, even honey. You know, maybe have a little bit of honey. There's certain you know, micronutrients in honey that can make it beneficial, but to use massive amounts of honey is, is just not a good thing. Go ahead, go, go ahead. Um, what about couscous? Is that benefit quinoa? Same thing. It's a it's it's a grain, yeah. So I would I would just try to limit those grains and the complex carbs that I that I listed, the yams, the sweet potatoes, the squash, just have less my good amount of Yeah, I know, that's the thing. So with it, so I try to teach people more of a lifestyle and not some rigid structure. So I would just try not to make it a staple, you know. Maybe have it a couple of times a week because uh, Rob Wolf, he, he wrote a really good book, but um, the other guy, uh, Dangerous Grains, they write a lot about this kind of stuff. There's a lot of literature and well documented how certain grains actually damage the lining of the gut. So what I would recommend is if you really like it, just limit it, you know? Go ahead. So you said that you, like, complex carbs are optional? Yes. You could replace it with fat. So what would be some examples of like a good portion and different kinds of fats? Well, you could do like, so you're already cooking with coconut oil or Kerry's Gold Butter. I would just add those two fats, more of it, to replace the complex carbs. Um, Bill Wolcott and Metabolic Typing, and there's a lot of other authors that talk about why people just do better on a high protein fat diet. And then other people like, um, like in the zone, Barry Sears talks about the 30-30-40, 30% protein, 30% fat, and 40% carbs. And some people do better more on a mixed diet, and some do better on more of a high protein diet. And a lot of it depends on genetics and bio-individuality. A lot of that might have to do with, if you're Northern European, you might just from based on your descendants, and if you go back far enough, you might need more protein and fat, but yet if you're Southern European or, or closer to the equator, and that's part of your genetics, you might need a little more carbs. That's kind of the thought on that. Yeah. Is, is brown rice part of the gut? Yeah. It is? Yeah, there's anti-nutrients. Yeah, there's lectins and, and different things, yeah. Because it seems to Fiber, yeah. But the thing is, you know, compare that to 100 grams of fruits and vegetables. The micronutrients in fruits and vegetables are off the charts. And grains, they're not that high. And sometimes they're actually, they have anti-nutrients, which that actually has a negative impact on your body. So as far as micronutrient density, uh, vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients, all that kind of stuff, I would lean more towards fruits and vegetables than that. But if you really like it, just have some, but try to limit it as much as you can, or just swap it out for a yam or sweet potato. And with that, you could just add a little coconut oil, a little a little uh, cinnamon, and that tastes really good. Oh, I love the yams. I do those yeah. all the time. There you go. You don't use supplements, though, it sounds like. I do, yeah, I do. Um, that's actually what we're gonna get into. That's the second phase. So what I'm talking to right now is the foundational principles to kind of build off of, and then the lab testing and supplement does, uh, lab testing and supplements do make a lot of sense. Yeah. So, 
So you're not saying much about uh, underground uh, Squ squ yeah, so that would be yams and, and squash and yeah. Uh, carrots. Uh, so carrots are fine. Beets. That's fine. Yeah. So those are those are going to have a little bit higher sugar content and are higher in the glycemic index. Um, usually with clients, it just depends on their goal. So if fat loss is a really big goal, you could limit those type of things. But if it's not a goal and you want those micronutrients that are in those, like you know, beets has some really interesting micronutrients that are unique to beets. Um, that's fine. Yeah, that's fun. How about millet? I think you. It's the same thing. Yeah, millet actually has gluten in it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's pretty. And I would just go back to like what I told her is that if you really like it, just limit it and don't make it a staple. Yeah, like only once a day. <laughs> <laughs> I'd actually limit it to like once or twice a week, but <laughs> yeah, it depends on where you're at health wise and what your goals are and, and if you're having any health symptoms. So, okay, you guys can sit down. Go ahead. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah. Do you recommend rice, almond, and soy milk instead of regular cow milk? Um, so the only dairy that I recommend is yogurt um, or raw milk. <laughs> So you can get raw milk from like Rainbow Acres. I really like raw milk because it has probiotics and enzymes in it. The problem with dairy is there are actually certain uh, compounds in dairy that are really hard for the gut. And that's why I think people end up becoming lactose intolerant. Um, any kind of soy is estro estrogenic and I would avoid completely. Um, having high levels of estrogen is not a good thing for your body. I mean, high levels of estrogen can cause uh, mutations. And it also has an inverse relationship with testosterone, which you don't want. Um, so I would avoid soy. I would avoid most dairy, unless it's either raw milk or yogurt. And if you're trying to lose fat, then I would limit the yogurt and only have it after workouts. But yogurt has a lot of probiotics. Um, so there's pros and cons to yogurt. Yeah. What was the other one? Uh, almond milk. Oh. Uh, yeah, almond and rice milk. Um, that I don't know. I mean, a lot of times when it comes to beverages, it's usually water and green tea, the two things I recommend. Or maybe other types of teas like yerba mate or Siberian ginseng tea or licorice tea. Um, with rice milk, I don't know if it has anti-nutrients in it. I'm not really sure. Um, it's still processed, which I'm pretty much against most processed foods. Um, if you really like that taste, I would just go with raw milk. I mean, raw milk is really good for you. I mean, there's a lot of probiotics in raw milk. There's a lot of enzymes, so it's easier to digest. Yeah. Now, I'm lactose intolerant. But you could probably have raw milk, huh? You could drink raw yeah. milk and I can yeah. digest it. There you go. Yeah, that's very, very common. It's because it, it's, it has everything it needs to break it down. Yeah. It, it's, a, it's a perfect food. Um, it depends. I, I think it really depends on what they're feeding the goat. So it's, it's, you know, it's not only you are what you eat, but you are what you eat eats. And that's why I try to encourage clients to have a, you know, really understand what farms they're getting their food from. Most people have no clue, but just kind of do the best you can and, and start asking questions. And the really good farms will label the foods and they'll tell you.